Hi, I'm Reverend Zach. I'm Frank Sis. And welcome to This Movie Was a Hot Dog, a podcast where me and my brother over here, Frank Sis, mm-hmm. watch, a cr- watch a bad movie, critically, financially, or otherwise. Then we review it, break it down, and tell you what we think. And this week we watched a 1990s kids movie, A Gnome Named Norm. Yeah, it's a strange one. <laughs> yeah, this was directed by Stan Winston. Yeah, yeah oh, one of my favorites. I forgot. There you I go. Almost, you almost missed my own tagline there. <laughs> You forgot to do your own joke, uh, d- but uh, Stan Winston is a- is actually one of my favorite really? people involved in movies. Yeah, you you don't know who Stan Winston is? Well, you know me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know me. I could just do. Re- you said you were on the Wikipedia page. You could have clicked on this guy's name. I could have, but I ch- he uh, designed the Predator for Predator. He worked on the Aliens movies. He did the dinosaurs for Jurassic Park. He worked on the Terminator films. He is the reason the Stan Winston creature shop is made. He is the practical effects guru of the 80s and 90s. He's a big name. And then there's this. Well, yeah, there's this. <laughs> but my point is, you should know who this guy is. <sighs> well, I know who I know his name. <laughs> So. Yeah, good point. You got me there. <sighs> uh, th- this stars uh, Anthony Michael Hall and Jerry Orbach. And I I cannot figure out for the life of me what this was supposed to be. Maybe, like, do you think a lot of the plot might have just went missing, too? I don't know. Well, you there's almost no information to know about this movie. This movie was never released on DVD. Its IMDb trivia is is blank. I don't know how much it made. I don't. There's no budget. There's no uh, production. Co- there's nothing. I don't know anything about this movie other than what this movie showed me, which is bizarre. This thing is bizarre. Yeah, and I went. I went looking around to see if like anyone had. Yeah, if there was any other information list, but I, I could barely find any reviews. The only thing that I did think was funny on IMDb, the plot keywords are gnome, mm-hmm. detective, bare-chested male, <laughs> m- male nudity, and embarrassing male nudity. <laughs> That's the keywords. Those are the keywords, and I was like, those. <laughs> <laughs> and I okay, whatever. <laughs> And when I first started watching it, uh, like you said, the movie, I thought maybe it might be a le- it was like a spinoff of the Leprechaun series or something. It, I, it, in a nutshell, this is a movie about a gnome from an underground place oh, yeah. comes up to Earth and uh, meets Anthony Michael Hall, who is a cop, and they help each other solve a murder. Which, when you say that, like, when you say that, you're like, ah, that's not a terrible plot for, like, a children's film. Like, those movies exist. So, okay, whatever. But this isn't that movie, though. Yeah, the be- especially in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, like, it plays itself as, like, I, w- I was watching this thinking they were hoping th- there was going to be, like, a, gnome, a Norm the Gnome franchise. Yeah, so a lot of, you know, three-foot action figures scare the crap out of all the kiddos. <laughs> yeah, like, this was going to be, okay, we're making a new lovable character. This guy is not likable or lovable, and for the first part of it, he's, like, frightening. Yeah, I was, I was, I was wondering if it was ac- – I didn't know anything about the movie beforehand, so I thought maybe we were in the middle of a horror movie. I, yeah, so it, we op- in the beginning is even creepy. We open up in caves where what we now assume, which we now know to be Gnome the Norm, getting a magic stone and digging a hole, and the credits are rolling, and it says Gnome the Norm as himself. <laughs> and I was like, to me, that was just like. Oh, see? He's a character. He's just a real... Like, we're going to make a franchise out of this guy. But then I also looked up the reason. Uh, that's because Gnome the Norm is played by, like, 12 people. Yeah, well, I saw that at the end. In the, yeah, there's, uh, like, 12 guys credited as him. So I guess in the beginning, they can't be, like, Gnome the Norm, and then just, a, like, a wall of names pop up. And I'm wondering at first, I go, maybe I need to look up Gnome the Gnome, Norm the Gnome's Gnome, IMDb. Gnome the Gnome... <laughs> I need to look oh, up. trust me, that's going to happen a lot, going gnome, 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 gnome. Gnome, anyway. 
So we cut to a police department where Jerry Orbach plays a chief of police because Jerry Orbach can only play a cop, I guess. He's in, was it Law and Order, is it? Yeah, yeah. he was in Law until he died right. uh, in real life. Yeah. Um, but I guess he can only play a cop or uh, the antagonist to Patrick Swayze in a dancing movie. But uh, Anthony Michael Hall shows up, and he is a cop, even though he looks like he's, like, 16. He's got, like, the swept-back blonde hair that's... It's not even that. He's got, like, a baby face. <laughs> and is it right off the bat, we... Oh, he meets him outside, right? Isn't Or that he's... No, he's going to do a sting, right? A drug sting. Yeah, he's... He's going to do his thing, but you're right when you're, like, slick-backed hair. Because, like I said, he looks like a high schooler playing a cop, but he's, like, he only, he's wearing, like, cool clothes, and he has his cop hat on backwards. And he and hates guns? Is that... He hates guns. He never loads his gun because guns are bad. What, what, what cop? <laughs> How did he make it through the police academy? Especially later on when uh, he gets into several shootouts and he is completely vulnerable because he doesn't have a gun. Yeah, and, and I don't think uh, I don't think he'd be allowed to continue his job. <laughs> and there'd also be a point like if this was a well-written movie, which surprise it's not. But if it was, there'd be the point where he has to use a gun to save somebody because he realized like, oh, that's part of my goddamn job. And that never happens. <laughs> It never happens, and he gets in so many jams where people are shooting at him, and he's pointing an empty gun at them and can't do anything about it because he won't load his goddamn gun. And he just runs away, ducks out. <laughs> he's like, this. Uh, so yeah, they put Anthony Michael Hall like at the lead of this task sting because they basically just say like, you don't act or look like a cop at all. <laughs> they'll just they'll just assume you're not one. Right, he's going to do a drug deal, right? Isn't that what the... Right. No, Diamond. Di okay, wow. Okay. To stop, which doesn't matter because that never comes into play after this. <laughs> because So they're, to stop this evil mob boss called Zadar. Zadar. So then we cut to the evil mob boss who is called Zadar, even though his henchman is played by the actor Robert Zadar, may his giant face rest in peace, and that really, really upset me. <laughs> oh, why don't you explain? I just did. Oh, why did it upset you? Just because he had the because same... Because the name. bad guy's name is Zadar, and there's a real guy standing next to him whose name is Zadar? <laughs> That's like if in Mission Impossible 5, Tom Cruise had a sidekick whose name was Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're telling me that wouldn't take you out of the movie? <sighs> I guess I wasn't bothered that much by it. Well, you don't know who I'm talking about anyway. I knew a little bit. D uh, did You did. Did you know anything what I said? A little. <laughs> what little? The Zadar part. That the character's name was Zadar? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway. Let's keep moving here. So, in, in this scene, they get a phone call where we we call Anthony Michael Hall's character and and he's like, okay, we're going to meet up here to, you know, get the diamonds and you give us the money. And it already, we're five minutes in and in this scene it becomes abundantly clear how funny they want us to think Anthony Michael Hall is. Yeah, it's, uh, he's playing like super goofy and it's, again, it's one of these 90s things. We've, we've run into it how many times now and how many episodes? But here's the thing though, this movie was like, for I don't, I can only assume reasons that are incredibly obvious... <laughs> This movie was filmed in 1988 oh. and shelved until 1990, probably because when they got time filming in 1998, 1988, I'm sorry, they showed it to the studio and the studio went, well, we obviously can't release this because it's really bad <laughs> because this is atrociously terrible. And then I guess there was a lull in their release schedule and they're like, what do we got in the back? Uh, let's go with uh, a gnome named Norm. I think we can release that as a kid's movie, right? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. But he's like, he's got, like I said, he's got his hat on backwards. He's like copying everything Jerry Ar Orbach says. Like every time he's like, okay, you go over here. Anthony Michael Hall's like, okay, you go over here. <laughs> like, it, it's, and then he like stands up and he goes up to one of the other cops who like hates him. And he's like, uh, you're going to be in charge of Mr. Potato Head. Now, no matter what he says, Mr. Potato Head can't leave this office. Oh, my And I'm like, ah, 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 ah. I actually, there was a 
maybe one or two spots I laughed in this movie, but uh, the rest of them I was like, yeah, I know I'm supposed to be laughing, but yeah. I, I mean, I mean, if you, if all you do is write jokes, one or two are going to be right. like statistically have to be kind of funny, but his whole his character is supposed to be hilarious and they really front load this movie with him being like dancing around and bebopping all over the place and because we get to the park like we're immediately in the park where this deal is supposed to go down and uh gnome the norm digs out of the ground and so he's all he's in the background he's watching the everything that's going down basically right but as he comes out like anthony michael hall is literally dancing and singing like Dancing and singing, and he's pretending he's on a radio show. He's like, hey, all you cops out there, listen to The Wire. This is Ra- DJ Radio, blah, blah, blah. And he goes on and on and on. A, <laughs> like, and it never ends. And there's a theme in this movie with that where, like, stuff goes on for a lot longer than it should. Oh, a lot longer <laughs> than it should. But here's the other weird part. So he's dancing around, right? Mm-hmm. And he's being goofy and silly. And Gnome the Norm is... So, no, Norm the no- Oh boy. <laughs> the little creature is supposed to be cute. Like we're supposed to think that. Right. Uh, well, <laughs> supposed to. I'll, we'll get on that yeah, later. Th- Holy that's what crap. He would like us to believe. Yeah. But the music in this scene is like horror movie. Like he is stalking him to kill him. Right. And and so it's supposed to be this cute little creature hiding in the shadows and Anthony Michael Hall's going whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and the music is like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> maybe they messed it up, and we're su- that's supposed to be the music for like the intensity of the sting operation. Well, that is what it's supposed to yeah. be, but th- the music is leading us to believe that this scene is tense. But the main character acting in it is doing his best Jim Carrey impression. Like, <laughs> and he doesn't show. Like, you imagine like the the diamond, like legal diamond dealers, like. If this was, if it was, you know, if the real cop was doing it, they'd be like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? I'm not doing any business with him. Well, we don't even get to find out because it, because Anthony Michael Hall gets knocked out by a mystery person. By not paying attention. By not paying attention because he's literally swinging on a merry-go-round singing. <laughs> and a guy who just walks up behind him and hits him in the back of the head with a baseball bat. <sighs> and this is now the mystery of the movie. Because the guy who knocked out Anthony Michael Hall doesn't give the mob guy the money, gives him a bomb, takes the money and the diamonds. So Anthony Michael Hall gets yelled at uh, in the traditional police movie fashion, where it's like, you're on thin ice, detective. <laughs> but I love this part because it's just like, um, he's there, there's a part where the, the, the police detective is like, get a ride, you know, we're going to get you a ride home. You know, to, you know, you need to get away from this case or something. And he's like, no, I'm not taking a ride. And then they just leave and they're just like, fine, walk. Yeah, they literally <laughs> leave him in the in the middle of an abandoned zoo. <laughs> like, that's where the meeting was. It's not even like, well, you can't stay here. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're like, see you later. You, where you might have just got, you know, hit over the head and been part of this. But case. wait a minute. he's Why does he need a ride? His car is there. He gets in his car in the next scene. I know, but it's just that, at that part, though, it just looks it just seems so strange. So Anthony Michael Hall is creeping around this crime scene because he's like, no, no, I'll get the money back. And he sees something hanging from a tree. He goes and gets it. And it's this little bag with this glowing rock in it, which is the which is Norm's glowing rock bag. And then there is this weirdly creepy scene that's played for laughs where this otherworldly monster creature is stalking Anthony Michael Hall. And he's like, he's walking and he hears a noise, he turns around, there's nothing there, and then we cut to seeing, like, there's these weird little tiny feet directly behind him, and Anthony Michael Hall just can't see him, because he's hiding, and he's creeping up on him, and all you need to do is use the music from the sting scene, and it's a horror the creepy, movie. and it's a horror movie, <laughs> I just choked on my own spit, <laughs> you're gonna be alright, yeah, I'm good, I didn't know, at this point, I thought maybe this thing was gonna kill him. Like I said, I didn't know what this was, which I guess I should go into because you asked me this before we started. Okay, go for it. Why I picked this movie. Yeah. Do you remember the, well, obviously I know you do, the movie rental place by our house when we were growing yeah, up? Yeah, of course. When that place was in its heyday, when it like had a billion VHS tapes, right? Yeah. Right behind the front desk, and you could see into the back office where they kept all the spares and all the shit. Yeah. 
there was a life-size cardboard cutout of no- Norm the Gnome that said Norm the Gnome on it. Ah. And I had no idea what it was. But this thing scared the crap out of me when I was a kid (laughs) because it's like a three foot tall dog man that has like a monkey face and is wearing like these tattered robes and has like claws. (laughs) And this thing used to scare the shit out of me every front just to not see that (laughs) every time I went to go rent a VHS tape. And when I was looking through movies to find, I was like, oh, my God, that's the thing I used to see. (laughs) So we had to watch it. So I had to watch it to finally see what this was. And I still don't know. (laughs) Well, at least you're less scared of it now. I I think I'm a little more scared Uh, of it. Well, well, we'll get I mean, it's the beginning after the beginning of the movie. It's not as bad, but it's well, yeah, it's yeah, it it was that was a joke for you. But if I don't know, but like I said, I didn't know. (laughs) No, I'm, I'm the, he's ready to stab this guy in the back or bite his back out or so. I don't know. So Anthony Michael Hall walks to his car. Norm gets in the car and he drives all the way back home and then realizes as soon as he parks his car in his garage that there's somebody in there. Right. So he, he pulls out his gun, which is unloaded and he can do nothing with. <laughs> and he's creeping along. And suddenly this tiny creature leaps from his car and starts to choke him to death. With his own tie. <laughs> With it, and it, like, he is dying. Anthony Michael Hall manages to reach for his gun and just beats him with the butt of his gun, <laughs> knocking this monster out. He pistol whips the crap out of him. And then he puts it in a tiny dog cage and takes it inside. Now, that, yeah, now you're like, wow, this is getting serious. And then we finally, in bright light, see Norm as it is a hideous monster creature. <laughs> Doesn't look very much like a gnome. <laughs> because it's like, it's t- he's two feet tall. And he's got, like, pointy elf ears and, like, an elongated dog snout, but it's his the tip of his dog snout face is, like, monkey lips. You know, the, the, the character, <laughs> caricature, caricature, I don't way, know what you're trying to the say. The way this thing looks um, reminds me a lot of the movie The Dark Crystal. Yeah, well. A little. I'm not saying way? directly. I'm just saying, you know. It's almost like that's what they were kind of going for with it. I don't think so. Well, yeah, well, they don't because have Because they're too... They're two completely different movies, tonally. Oh, yeah, obviously, yeah. Like, the the two movies couldn't be any less, any more different. I'm just going to yeah. look. Like, if you want to, I'm trying to, if I could think of one way to describe this thing. Fuck, just see The Dark Crystal. It's better than That's this That's a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So, anyway, they're staring at each other, and he's like, what are you? And this, and this thing is just in the cage going, <laughs> not talking, he's just growling at him. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay, so it's an uncivilized creature from another realm who knows nothing but violence. And that couldn't be further from the truth, <laughs> but we don't but find that out that... till later. So he, Anthony Michael Hall is calling people. Ultimately, that doesn't matter. Th- this is when Norm uses his one magic power. Is, is, it, is this magic? Yeah, I think it has to be, yeah. Because it, the, when he did it in this scene, I didn't think this was a magic trick. So, in this scene, Norm yawns and pretends to fall asleep, and Anthony Michael Hall falls asleep, and I thought he just did that to so that Anthony Michael Hall would lower his guard and also fall asleep, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess you're right, but it has to be magic because it worked on me through the television. <laughs> but that's not the case. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Because later in the movie, he uses it like three or four more times he will yawn at someone and that person will then fall asleep so it's magic but that's that's the only magic thing it can do well um, he's got some other skills besides magic which <laughs> well, like what not knowing that glass isn't transparent so i'd call that a weakness really I, I I think what the movie wants you to call it is a gag maybe yeah maybe but <laughs> Because at multiple times in this movie, Norm runs up to a glass window and smashes into it and knocks out because he doesn't know that glass is is glass. It's a thing. I guess. Yeah, he just think. Yeah, he doesn't understand the, a transparent um, ob- object. I guess. <laughs> sure. There you go. <laughs> We're really doing good with our words today, aren't we? I'm telling you, just the fact that this thing is called Norm the Gnome. 
is fucking up the way I talk. No one, because every time you got to say it, you got to really think how to say it. I don't want to say it out of order. <laughs> Which I'm sure we have five times already. Yeah. So he he uses his magic power. Anthony and Michael Hall falls asleep. He breaks out of the cage. Then there is another semi-violent scene where Norm tries to choke him again. <laughs> and tries to kill him. And so this whole scene ends with Norm talking, telling Anthony Michael Hall that this rock is called a lumen, and Anthony Michael Hall handcuffing him. Next morning, Anthony Michael Hall takes Norm back to the park in a bag. <laughs> the, the music, again, is silly and goofy, as to convey that this is a silly and goofy scene, but Norm has violently tried to kill Anthony Michael Hall twice. <laughs> Anthony Michael Hall doesn't know what this thing is. He acknowledges it that it's another species, and they hate each other, but the movie's like, boop, ba doo 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 doop ba doo 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 <laughs> It's just so... It's like the tone of what we're seeing and what we're hearing convey two very different emotions several times in this movie that your brain doesn't know how to feel. <laughs> and you wonder, he's like, yeah, again, so this is why it's sat on the shelf for two years. <laughs> oh, yeah. So his female partner shows up, and he's like, I got a witness. You're not going to believe it. He's a tiny monster man. <laughs> so, of course, as soon as she shows up, Norm hides because ah, ha, ha, ha. We uh, didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, because there's another hilarious scene of goofiness. Norm feels this girl's butt. <laughs> then she leaves, and he tells Anthony Michael Hall that she has nice boobs. Yeah. I'm like, what is this? Kids movie. Yeah, is it? <laughs> like, I don't know. Did, I wonder, was this, it? This movie's horrifying. Was it billed as a kids movie? Who knows? Because there's no information. I, there's no information. I don't know what this is built. I mean, we could go back and watch a movie trailer about it. Maybe that would convey it. But <laughs> who's got that? Who's got that kind of time? Not us. <laughs> so, so basically, Anthony Michael Hall is going to hold this thing hostage until he finds out who the guy from the park was that set the bomb because Norm Norm said that he saw this happen. And uh, How does he Anthony describe Michael it again? He uses some. <laughs> He says that it's a giant with no eyes, right. which we find out just means everybody to him is a giant, so he calls everyone giant. Right. And no eyes means they were wearing sunglasses, which I don't understand because the sting happens at like two in the morning. <laughs> How did he see? And he says that this guy had a weird scream. A weird scream. He had a weird scream. Remember that, because that'll come back when the movie ends. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. This movie felt like it was never going to end. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It didn't feel as long as The Phantom. <laughs> oh, I had a real hard time getting through this one. Oh, really? Oh, you the, didn't? The Phantom, the Phantom I could watch, because at least The Phantom was like, I knew what The Phantom wanted to be. Yeah, that's true. This we had no and, clue. And I like Billy Zane. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll watch this and support this. I don't know what this is supposed to be, and I don't like no Norm. D God damn it, the elf! He's not an elf, actually. He's a gnome. He says it a couple I, times that. He's I know not. we correct that. Yeah. <laughs> we, they say that as if elves are real, though. <laughs> you know, elves. They're like, what are you, an elf? He's like, no, I'm a no, a no. Fuck, I can't even do it. <laughs> no, I'm a gnome. Name Norm. Oh. So uh, they get back to Anthony Michael Hall's apartment where the mob boss shows up because you you quickly find out that this mob boss only has one henchman. Just one. Like, <laughs> it's Robert Zadar, and that's it. Like, other than that, this guy does all of his own legwork. <laughs> he shows up, he trashes Anthony Michael Hall's place, and then he threatens Anthony Michael Hall. He's like, I'm accusing you of being a cop because that the guy blew up and everything went south. And then he's like, oh, what's this around your neck? And he takes the lumen mm -hmm. from Anthony Michael Hall. And then Norm bites this guy in the balls. <laughs> and we watch this man writhe around in pain for a good two minutes. That's Here's your new lovable character, everybody. And that's supposed to be funny. But it's not even played funny. No, it's, like, no, it's, it's not pretty, even like... I mean, you can. it's almost like a torture scene. Yeah, because it's not like... Somebody bonks their head and there's Tweety birds and they're like, "Woo, that's smart!" He's like, "Ah!" <laughs> this guy's like, ah! Ah! And it go it goes on and on. This guy writhes in pain. <sighs> A kid's movie. So 
so now Norm <laughs> won't leave Anthony Michael Hall because the mob guy stole the lumen, and they need to mutually help each other get the lumen back and solve the crime, which seems like the way you would have set this movie up 20 minutes ago. Like, you set it up like that right away. So they need to be, they have a mutual understanding instantly. Not like where this monster has been trying to kill Anthony Michael Hall. Yeah. I like, you, you have to set it up so they have a weird friendship right away. Not that they want to kill each other. Yeah, because at that, at that, like I said, I'm watching the movie for the first time. I don't know. So to me, it was it was a horror movie. I mean, so yeah. now we now we go to the beach because we're looking for Robert Zadar. Oh, this is great. not to be confused with the boss, the mob <laughs> boss Zadar, the actor Robert Zadar. <laughs> They're on a stakeout. Norm looks at a pair of boobs and then says, says a creepy thing. Then they get hot dogs. Norm doesn't eat the hot dog. Instead, he eats the wrapper and the cardboard. So he eats paper. Which, but is that a thing that gnomes do? I no, not normally. No. Like, if it was something like he only eats mushrooms or fruit, that would make sense. Not like, oh, I eat paper. You know how, like, underground where animals can get paper? <laughs> like, w- w- what's he, what do they eat underground? Not paper, I'll tell you that. Usually lichen. Gnomes usually eat a lot of lichen. <laughs> and what is that from? Um, Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. The so game, not does, the movie. <laughs> so how does Norm stack up to n- traditional gnomes? Well, he doesn't... No. He doesn't really look like one. Um, he doesn't eat paper. Sound like one? Do anything no, like that? most gnomes do. are like, hiya, I'm, you know, I'm a gnome. You know, it's, no, that's not the same thing. And most gnomes are into tinkering and stuff like that. So. Also, how does this thing know American English? <laughs> He's been studying. From, from what? All the paper on the books they get down there? So then they spit in each other's hands, which is a hilarious scene because Norm spits a big loogie. <laughs> and then Norm tells Anthony Michael Hall that every 10 years, gnomes have to bring the lumen up to the surface mm. because the lumen is like a portable sun. It has to absorb sunlight. Then they can bring it down and it'll provide light and help grow food, which to me just goes, why don't you guys just live on the top of the goddamn earth then? Yeah, and that's really not how it happens with gnomes. Oh, I'm sorry. How does it really happen? Because well, you know what really well, happens. They're, they're, they're a subterranean race, really. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. So they mostly would just, they would be able to live in the darkness and, uh, uh but never mind. I, we, we shouldn't do this because you're just going to make fun of me. It's already happened. Uh, so the, I'm going to quit. So, for, so then uh, Norm uses his magical ability to make Anthony... Michael Hall fall asleep again. Mm. Is the, I don't even like this. Another thing is the fact that that's his power and the way he does it to people funny. Because he's like, oh, you look sleepy. And then he starts to yawn, and then he pretends to fall asleep. And then the person falls asleep, and he's like, oh, now I'm going to get into mischief. <laughs> is, is that, is that like, are we supposed to be like, oh, that's charming? I didn't even think that that was, you know, supposed to be funny. I don't, like, I don't know if it's supposed to be funny. Maybe it's is like, it ooh, it's his shit? power. I don't know. You know, like, But it's such a shitty power. <laughs> well, we've discussed some superheroes with some pretty bad powers before, so, I mean, I guess we shouldn't be all that... That that's like if my only power was I could heat up a pop tart by looking at it, <laughs> like and that was it. I couldn't heat up anything else. You bring in a pop tart and I can just look at it and get it to the right temperature. That's the equivalent to how amazing this power. Or you is. could overheat it and be like, "Here, bad guy, eat this," and he burns the I top can, of his mouth. <laughs> I can only overheat a pop tart. That's it. Only overheat it. <laughs> So now that he's asleep, Norm gets out of the car, puts on sunglasses, and everybody points to him, and he goes to look at the ocean. That goes nowhere. <laughs> then he just gets back in the car yeah, and back. says, yeah, and just goes, hey, Anthony Michael Hall, Robert Zadar, not the mob boss named Zadar, the actor Robert Zadar, is getting in a car and driving away. So they follow him to a butcher. They get in a fight. Robert Zadar, for some reason mistakes norm for a baby yeah and he's like coochie coochie coo i love kids <sighs> but it looks like a dog man <laughs> also it's bigger than a baby is. <laughs> yeah, it's like two feet tall two and a half two feet tall and it's got a dog face <laughs> yeah i don't i didn't understand that at all either so then anthony michael hall is put on a hook robert zadar picks him up and puts him on a meat hook and throws him into a meat locker 
Then he makes a call to his boss, I guess, to get permission to kill this guy. But while he's on the phone, Norm literally crawls all over this guy. Like, he's on his shoulders, and he's on his head, and he's rubbing his hair, and he's touching his face. And he's like, cute baby. Yeah, he's like, cute baby. First of all, we I don't th- think we said this yet. Norm is also covered in hair. Like <laughs> He's very hairy. Like, covered in hair like a monkey is. <laughs> and this guy's just like, oh, cute human baby? Which is, I, I, I that, what? <laughs> cute human baby. <laughs> What is this? What is this movie? <sighs> so he goes to kill Anthony Michael Hall because the mob boss gave him permission. So he pulls out his gun. And just before he can shoot Anthony Michael Hall, Norm takes a giant meat hook and stabs Robert Sadar in the balls. <laughs> and we never see this character again. So I can I am only led to believe that this man dies. Blood loss from his penis. <laughs> yes. Th- yeah. Thank you. Well, I, that's what we're going for. I mean. Well. You, well. Maybe I should I have been I, a little less dramatic. About it. Well, no. I think you needed to be a little more dramatic and less clinical because you know you play it up. It's for uh, yucks and laughs, and you go blood loss from his penis. <laughs> his his penis was bleeding. For some reason, just the way you said penis <laughs> made my skin crawl. You got him. So. Sorry. Uh, so Robert Zadar dies from blood loss from his penis. Sorry. And then, <laughs> so sorry, guy. Everyone on listening, I'm really sorry. <laughs> they they get to the mob boss's hideout because he has the lumen that Norm wants, and uh, there's a shootout which uh, would certainly help if Anthony Michael Hall had a loaded gun. He does. And the and the mob boss gets away because he has a gun. And he's shooting them. Well, like this movie could have ended right now. Well, we knew that wasn't going to happen. Well, of course, but if this guy did his goddamn job, he's a pretty bad cop. Even and he's not even supposed to be on this case, by the way. No, yeah, he's he's suspended from this case. So the bad guy speeds away in a car. He he also popped Anthony Michael Hall's tires. So he hijacks a hearse. This is funny because the hearse is in a funeral prese- procession, and the family's behind him. I don't know. I actually kind of found this part a little bit funny. I skipped this entire part, because oh. as soon as I found out he was in a, ho- a hearse, I went, bullshit, and I skipped it till the end. <laughs> really? I watched it. Oh, what was it hilarious? Was it a rip-roar and fun time? <laughs> no. I guess so. Yeah, I'm glad I skipped it. <laughs> the first part I found funny, that when he got in the procession was going on, I was like, ah, ah. That was that was what really yeah. you went ah uh-huh. yeah about that ah uh. so the mob boss gets away Anthony Michael Hall kind of gets arrested but then is let go Norm follows the mob boss but gets scared because there's noises and a dog's barking and he's a weird and that doesn't go anywhere either I thought it was gonna be like an environmental thing yeah. because there's all these bulldozers and like like a uh, uh, ground movers and I thought it was gonna be like oh that they dig up the gnome's places sometimes and he's scared of them nope it's just never elaborated on he just goes I'm scared and goes back like was... to him <laughs> yeah and then it, so they they meet back up and uh, Anthony Michael Hall's like, hey, don't be scared. Norm, Norm cries because he's like, it's scary up here. He's like, yeah, well, stop crying. So they stop crying. <laughs> then they go. So Norm leads Anthony Michael Hall back to the building that the mob, mob boss ran into. The scene is really stupid because they have the mob boss and they go, scream. We need you to scream so that Norm can determine whether or not the scream matches the one he heard. And this is like, this is supposed to be funny. Yeah, this one's like a high pitched scream. Yeah, thing. they're like scream, mob boss, and he's like, Aah! and I'm just like, man, this is this is really dumb. <laughs> this is like really fucking. Dumb. And I'm waiting. I'm going. Am I missing something? Like I thought I was actually missing something. It's just supposed to be funny. No, like not even joking. I rewound this scene three times because mm. I was like, all right, this is supposed to mean something. What does this mean? It doesn't. It doesn't. It's just it, he's he sounds like this because it's funny. Yeah, it'll be just funny because he screams like a girl. It was like it, it, oh. <laughs> so the mob guy is then gonna throw Norm out a window because to get away, whatever. Then the mob guy gets shot in the chest on the top of a 
ten story building from, a from across the street on the ground. And we find out that the guy who shot him, first of all, is using a stub nose thirty eight, which the bullet won't even go that far. <laughs> Never mind be able to assassinate a man on the top of a building. With precision accuracy. And we find out that it's Jerry Orbach and that he's the bad guy. The turn. Or whatever. Yeah. And so now Norm gets the lumen back because this mob boss is dead. Uh, Norm decides to stick around. He doesn't want to leave just yet because Anthony Michael Hall is his friend now mm-hmm. or whatever. Then all the cops rush in and Norm and Anthony Michael Hall get arrested for the mob boss's murder. Right. While they're in the back of a paddy wagon getting taken to the police department, we find out that Norm didn't take the lumen to recharge it in the sun. He stole the lumen to recharge it so he could get laid when he gets home. Yeah, because he's not. A, he says, like, "Oh, I'm not actually the warrior that's supposed to do this. I'm just a tunneler or something like that." And that he, yeah, he, the only way you know he can become a big bean, mean warrior and everyone will like him, including his girlfriend, I guess. No, he says he wants to do it to get laid. <laughs> yeah, in the long and the short of it, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's doing it to get laid. So at the police station, there is this like five minute scene. Of Norm being booked by the police, <laughs> we see him, like, this is where the, the plot, the key words in IMDb came up, because we get to see him naked, and a woman, like, giggle at his penis. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> it's funny, because he's tiny, so I'm sure he's got a tiny penis. Oh, boy. I think this is, we've said penis more in this episode <laughs> than we have in any other, like, all of our other episodes combined. I don't think we've ever said it. Maybe, maybe once. I don't know. We've had to say penis at least once, right? Penis, mm. penis. We're really pushing it, New York. <laughs> so, New record. But that explains the, the keyword of embarrassing male nudity. Yeah, well, I guess you're right. It does. So uh, Norm figures out that be- after they get booked, Jerry Orbach brings Anthony Michael Hall and Norm into his office. Norm realizes that Jerry Orbach is the bad guy. Because he has a hearing aid, and when he, like, tunes his hearing aid, it makes a high-frequency pitch that Norm can hear, and that's what he thought the scream was. Mm -hmm. Which would have been a good – well, not a good reveal, but at least it would have have been an end-of-the-movie reveal that he's the bad guy. But we already know he's the bad guy. So it doesn't matter that much. We just found out ten minutes ago that he's the bad guy. If you waited ten minutes, we would have found out. Then you could also reveal that he shot that guy. Because they're constantly looking for somebody who matches this scream. You already gave it away. Why did you tell us the mystery before the characters do? That's not fun. That's not how you make a fun movie. Yeah, it doesn't follow the good formula of a good... Uh, mystery or noir movie or anything. Oh, this isn't really a noir movie, though. <laughs> what? No, I wouldn't call it a noir movie at all. <sighs> yeah, I'm really on a roll today. But but the thing <laughs> is, it's it's just it's so it's such bad writing because it would be one thing if we knew the whole time that Orbach was the bad guy and then they found out at the end and we got to see how they found out. There's 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 some fun to no, be they had. Stag- they try to stagger it, it seems, and that makes it ten – it just doesn't make it work at all. It doesn't make it work at all because once they figured it out, there's we don't have that aha moment. No. We're like, I had that moment already. And frankly, if I had that moment in this scene, it would have been more dramatic. So now that all of the drama is taken out of it, I don't even care. So what, is this movie over yet? So it, It's ridiculous. So Norm uses his sleeping magic to escape by making a guy who's guarding him fall asleep. And he jumps out a window and he tunnels into the earth. And they're all like, well, I guess that's the end of him. Wrong. Because then Norm tunnels through the police station floor. And no one like cares. He's a, like he's a graboid from Tremors. And no one – and do you notice like no one really cares? No. He's literally just like burrowing through the tile floor. Tile is flying everywhere. And everybody's like, that's not my – I'm not the tile guy. Hey, well, just ignore it. <laughs> he breaks Anthony Michael Hall out of jail. And now his female partner, who is also kind of his girlfriend, yeah, I would say so, belie- believes him about Norm. Now uh, they get into the uh, garage and they get into his car and they speed away and they realize they got to go to the park because that's where Jerry Orbach probably hid the money. 
Uh, Are you all right over there? It was a burp, and then like solid came up with Ooh, it. One of them burps. <laughs> it was not great. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, Anthony and Michael Hall's going to the park because they know that's where the money is. Then in the meantime, in Jerry Orbach's car, Norm is there and attacks him. Jerry Orbach violently bashes his head into the steering wheel, <laughs> then throws him onto the road and runs him over with his car. You know, a kid's movie. <laughs> Norm didn't die or get hit because they cut away, and then he's at the park, and Norm ha- jumps out from underneath his car, so I guess he's fine. And then uh, Jerry Orbach finds Anthony Michael Hall. They get the money. There's a fist fight. Then there's a gun fight, which Anthony Michael Hall loses again because he refuses to have a gun. And this is the part in the movie where you would have him have to pick up a gun. And make it like, like, oh, he's okay now, you know. Well, not just that he's okay, like, he have him realize, like, hey, if you want to be a cop in L.A., where people, <laughs> where all the guns are, yeah. like, maybe you should carry a goddamn gun. <sighs> but he doesn't. Norm tunnels up as Jerry Orbach's about to shoot him, uh, bites him in the balls, because that's his go-to move. <laughs> his finisher. Then, then there's a kerfuffle. Uh, Norm gets shot. Jerry Orbach shoots him, but he's fine because he made a wood. He's ma- yeah, he's like his skin is so tough that he's impervious to bullets, <sighs> which is just we don't. They, they just go, huh? You're really thick skinned. You're like, what? You can't just t- say that. I mean, and I just want to go on the record. That's not how gnomes work. <laughs> I love how you're Doctor Gnome all of a sudden. Well, you know, uh, you know, in World of Warcraft, I played a gnome. Uh, so you're an expert then? Uh, somewhat, yeah. All right, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, gnomes are just, you know, if if they came to our realm, and they got shot. Unless they were a wizard, you know, then it would be different. But yeah. Oh right, unless that gnome was also a wizard. Right, but if it was, you know, yeah. if it was just like a regular gnome, mm-hmm. you know, he would probably right. get killed. No- normal gnomes, so, like the ones you'd normally. You guys find. know. Everyone out right. there knows. Yeah. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> Keep moving here. Well, that's it. The movie's over. They refill the lumen. They hold it up to the sun. It refills, and then Norm leaves. Yeah. The movie ends. There's a hug, and he kisses the girl, and then there's like a really weird freeze frame on this scary monster puppet, and then the credits roll. What a movie. It was awful. I, I was, so, yeah. So why don't you go into your rating and review? Remember, the rating system is you didn't hate it. It's a good party movie. It's a good hang- hangover movie, or you hated it. Well, I'm gonna maybe it's a good hangover movie because boy, if you want to wake up and be like, "What the frick is happening?" That sure will do it. <laughs> Get your moving in the day. I go, "Oh yeah, you wake up from a party. You know, you had a couple friends over. Um, you had a few beers, and then the next morning you're waking up and you're just like, oh, what happened last night? You don't even want to remember it.'" You want to watch this? Will this will make you feel a lot better about what you did the night before? You watch watch this movie because it is a. I didn't want to say a treat. It's just I don't know. It's something like you've never seen before. It'll have you guessing uh, what kind of movie it is all the way through, and uh, it is definitely one of the worst movies we've we've done. So yeah, I just I'll give it the the Hangover movie title. I'm caught between giving it. A, I hated it and. It's a good party movie because it's almost like you need to see this to believe how bad it is. Because it's okay. like it's not even bad in an entertaining way, but it's bad in like a fascinating way. Yeah, you've never whole... seen anything like it. That's yeah. The whole time I'm just like, what does this? What does this movie want me to feel right now? <laughs> <laughs> and, and but like, don't take that as a recommendation. I hated this movie. <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> but. Oh, let me say this. I hated it, but if you feel the need to see what this is, I'm not going to stop you. I'm not your dad. <laughs> you should try it, though. I think people I, should I give it guess. a go. I guess if you want. You don't have to. Please don't take that as a recommendation, but Jesus Christ, this is, it's awful. <laughs> So, so, so uh, we. Uh, if you want to send us any questions, comments, concerns, or hate mail, you can send us uh, hate, hate mail moviehotdog at gmail dot com. We have a Twitter. You can follow us at at moviehotdog. You can follow us on Facebook and like us, send us comments and all that shit at this movie was a hot dog. And if you get this on Podomatic or iTunes, please rate and view and subscribe as it really helps the show and gives us some some exposure. I am done saying things into this microphone. Francis, do you have things to say into yours? Not anything.
Well, for Reverend Zach, this is Francis saying this movie was definitely a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs>